I'm Vico Panzella, and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about um, this kit that I made up for testing water stable aggregates in the field. So first I'll go over the pieces of the uh, kit and then I'll show you how it's used. So first in your kit, you always have your notebook, extra tape, a sharpie and a pencil just in case. So this here is our big two millimeter sieve um, that we're going to sieve our soil that we take out of the ground from or from our field. Um, and that's because as we all know, anything greater than two millimeters is not considered to be soil. Okay, and this here is the sieving apparatus. And then inside you can see we have our eight sets of sieves. Um, each sieve is this pair set and we have a 250 micrometer sieve and a 53 micrometer sieve um, and we use these two um, class sizes of aggregates because in published literature it's those two class sizes that um, show the greatest change um, due to agriculture or land use changes. Okay, and then we have our field scale and then this little um, cup is going to be used to weigh the soil and this here is the scoop to take the soil out of our sample bag or bucket. Um, and then, of course, we have our squirt bottle with water, which we're going to need um, to wet our paper towel later on to capillarily wet the soil once they're in this, the small sips. And then these here are used um, to transport the sieves from the field back to the lab after we've done the wet sieving. Um, so you have your sieves here with your soil, and you're just going to put both of them in this piece here. And then we have these little cap things um, that are going to go in between and on top of the 250 micrometer sieve, and that's just to keep soil in place during the car ride. And then this little container here can be used um, to put the sieves in after you put them for transport to keep them organized and straight up so they don't fall over and you don't lose your soil. And then this bucket here is the bucket that we actually do the wet sieving in. Um, so this. Here's John in our field. We just took the first pour, putting it into the bucket. Um, as you can see, he's going a little into the field to take the soil samples, and that's because of that one meter buffer area from the edge of the field to where we're sampling. And when he brings the next core into the bucket, he's going to get the soil out of the core. And then he's going to make sure to really mix the soil cores together. Um, it's really important that you homogenize the samples together so that when we do the water stable aggregate testing, you get a true reading of what's actually going on in your field and not just from one of the, what, not just from one of the cores um, because soil can be highly variable within a small area. So homogenization is key. Um, so now I'm going to show you guys how to actually use our water stable aggregate kit, testing kit. Um, so here we have our bucket of water filled with water um, and it's filled to about the tops of this green tape water line. If it's a little off that's okay. Um, just try to make sure that the bucket is on a flat surface so the water line stays even. Um, and then this here is the top of our water container and we're going to use this to be our impervious surface to capillarily wet our soil once we weigh it out of the our sips. Um, here we have our field scale and our soil weighing cup. Um, and when you put that on the scale, make sure that you zero it out. And then here we have our sieved under two millimeter soil um, and our little soil scoop. So we're going to weigh out about 10 grams 
about 10 grams of soil. Okay, so once you weigh it out, you're going to take out your sieve um, and make sure you record the weight of the soil with the correct sieve that you're putting the soil in. And when you're putting, pouring the soil into the sieve, make sure not to lose any of the soil because that'll throw off your calculations later. And then once you pour that in, you're just going to use the tip of your pencil and um, make the soil into an even surface within the sieve. And if any soil falls through the bottom sieve, that's okay because that's soil that's going to be lost during the testing anyway, so we're not too worried about it. So then we're going to do the same thing for all eight of our sieves. So we have our paper towel um, on our impervious surface. And we're going to use the squirt bottle and we're going to saturate the paper towel. Okay, so once the paper towel is saturated, um, just make sure there's no puddles of water. And then we're just going to place our sieves on it. Um, you're going to place both the 250 micrometer sieve and the 53 micrometer sieve on here. Um, just in case any of the soil um, fell through. So then we're going to let our soil sit on this um, wet surface for five minutes so that the soil can get evenly wet by capillary action. Um, and if you're doing this and you notice that some of the soil or some of the sieves aren't wetting all the way, after a couple minutes you can go ahead and use your squirt bottle. Um, lift up that particular sieve, add more water, make sure it doesn't puddle, and then just put your sieve back on. So now that we've capillarily wetted our soil for five minutes, um, I think it's easiest if you just place the apparatus on this water bucket to keep it off the ground and it's a good height. Um, so then after we wet our soils, we're going to restack them. Make sure you stack the matching sieve and make sure you put your 250 micrometer sieve on top of your 53 micrometer sieve very And we're going to put our apparatus into the water. Um, you're just going to use these viewing holes on top and you're just going to put this, the apparatus into the water so the soil is just submerged underneath. Um, and then we're going to start our timer and we're going to just lower um, the apparatus into the water. You can go until the bolts hit the bottom of the container and then use this little two centimeter piece of tape as a reference for how high you need to go back out. We do this, this up and down motion 30 times per minute for three minutes. So after the three minutes, um, go ahead and put the apparatus back onto the water container so the water can drain. Um, then using our squirt bottle, you can see that there's some soil residue up on the upper parts of the sieve. So while it's still stacked, you're gonna use the squirt bottle and just rinse the edges off um, so that they're clean of soil and any particles. Then once all your water is drained from your big sieve, you can take it off and you can put, it a, put them in the cover. Um, you can either put them in the viewing holes or just place them on the cover just to get them out of your way. And then just like the bigger sieves, um, the smaller sieves have more stuff stuck on the side. So again, you're going to use your squirt bottle and just clean off the edge. So once our sieves are done um, draining, we're going to get our packing kit. Get all that stuff out of the container. 
So as if you remember, we take this, we get our small sieve, our cap, then we're going to get our larger sieve. Again, you want to make sure that you stack them with their matching pair. And then we're going to put another cap. And then we can go into the container as stuff. Okay, so make sure that you have your sieves packed in a box or container, however you choose. Um, just make sure they're packed in tightly so that they can't fall over. You can't soil on the sides. Um, so once all of our sieves are packed and ready to go, um, we can clean up all the rest of our materials and get ready and the rest of the steps are done in the lab. Hi, I'm Rico Panzella. Um, so now we're back in the lab from the field. And the first thing you want to do once you get back into the lab is to label and weigh your um, drying tins. And you want to make sure that you label them the same way that you have your sieves labeled and that way you can relate or not confuse which drying tin goes with which sieve. Um, and make sure you use your field scale just in case there's any discrepancies in the field scale from the lab scale. Using the same scale the whole time will take care of that. Um, so my tins are already labeled and weighed and recorded in my data sheet. So once we have all of that done, you can take out your matching sieve to your already weighed and labeled um, drying tin. First you're going to take the first cap off. Then we have our 250 micrometer sieve. And as you can see, there's some soil that has fallen through from traveling from the field to the lab. Um, but this stuff that has fallen through is considered to be with the 250 micro sieve. The soil just got disrupted in the traveling. So just use a little bit of water with your squirt bottle and go ahead and rinse as much of that back into the sieve as you can. do the same with our 53 micron sieve and as you can see in here there's still some soil so again just use the wash bottle try to get all of that soil back into the sieve and then once you do that you can go ahead and put your sieves on their drying tins in the oven for about 24 hours um, until the soil is completely dry that it's been 24 hours later. Our soil that we put in our oven yesterday should be dry. Which it is. This is what they look like after they're dry. See the 53 micrometer one and the 250 micrometer sieve. Um, so now we're going to weigh again on our field scale. Weigh and record the weight of the dried soil, the sieve, and our tin. So now that we have our weight recorded, we're going to disrupt our aggregates. So I use a 600, yeah, a 600 milliliter beaker. You can use something smaller, it doesn't really matter, just as long as the sieve fits and you can put your hand in there to move it around. Um, and then if you have any soil on your drying tin, go ahead and knock that into the back into your sieve. So then we're going to take our 5% sodium hexametaphosphate solution that we made, and we're going to pour it into the center of the sieve so it falls on the soil. And we're going to pour just enough for one sample. So once it's, the outside line is about halfway up the um, threaded part of the sieve, that's about enough. Just move it up and down a few times. And then start your timer. It has to soak in the sodium hexametaphosphate for five minutes. Um, every 30 to 45 seconds. You need to just move it up and down a little bit to help disrupt those aggregates and get them broken down. So while you have this first one go in, go ahead and start your next sample. Again, we've weighed and recorded.
acids have been soaking in the sodium hexaminate phosphate for five minutes. Um, I think it's easiest if you still use your water tub as your um, as your sodium hexaminate phosphate waste tub and your apparatus to actually put the, take the sieve out of the beaker and put them on here so they can start to drip. And then I like to rinse my beakers first so I can lay them on this other side so they can dry out a little bit before my next sample. And then using either the squirt bottle or you could also use a sink. Um, you just need to pass Put some pressure on the soil um, to really break up the aggregates and have them fall through the sieve. Once you're done, it'll look something like this. And to know that you have all of your soil fallen through and that you only have primary or sand particles left, um, just watch the water that's dripping down because it'll become clear. And then you're going to put your sieve back onto the same drying tin that you've been using with this sieve, should be labeled the same. And you're going to go ahead and put that in the oven for about 12 to 24 hours so that that can dry. Now that we have had our sieves drying in the oven with our primary particles, we can go ahead and take those out. Um, this is about what it looks like when it's dry. So you can see it's all large particles and organic matter. Um, and then again, using our field scale, we're gonna weigh the tin, the sieve, and the dried primary particles. We're gonna record that weight in our notebook. Um, and then as soon as you have that weight recorded, it's just a matter of doing some simple calculations in order to get your percentage of total water stable aggregates, percentage of water stable aggregates greater than 250 micrometers, and percentage of water stable aggregates between 53 and 250 micrometers. Oh.